Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you. I believe it was Colonel Mustard in the study with the candlestick. Sorry, dude. Professor Plum. I said Plum. You said Mustard. Okay, best two out of three. Oh, I don't believe this guy. What? You're not alone, you're in the zone So hang up the phone and get in the zone Get in the zone, the Friday zone You're in the zone, the Friday zone Hey everybody and welcome back to the Friday Zone. Today's show is all about games. Seriously? I'm being dead serious. Don't play games with me, Emily. I promise, I promise. And we start with a lesson in the game of pool with one of the best players in the world. So come along with me and my friends on a Friday Zone field trip. Hey Friday Zone, we're here at Brickyard Billiards for a Friday Zone field trip with a world champion pool player. Jeanette Lee, thank you so much for being here. Hello, hello. We also have some of our friends, Cheyenne, Penelope, and Anna. So Jeanette, first off, you are a world champion pool player. How does it feel? It's exciting. The, the funny thing about it is the better you get at something, the more you realize that you can get so much better. I love pool because every time I break the balls, there's a completely different picture, and I just know that I can get better and better and better, and all I have to do, work hard, don't quit. People do not know you in the pool world as Jeanette Lee. They know you as a different name. Can you tell us what that is? They know me as the Black Widow. Because when I played pool, I would lure my opponents to the table and then I would One of the most common games out there right now is a game called eight ball. And you win by making the eight ball. But first, you must make all the solid balls or all the striped balls. Once you make all the balls on your team, which are stripes or solids, you then have to pocket the eight ball in a called pocket. And what that means is you have to say, I'm going to make the eight ball in this side pocket. So you have to call what pocket you're going to. And once you make the eight ball, you win the game. And it's a great feeling. So how many balls are actually on the table at the start of a game? OK, there are 16 balls on the table. Mm -hmm. There's the cue ball. And then we have 15 other balls. Now, do you have any tips or advice for maybe young players like these girls that are trying to learn a new game? Yes, and I would say this in all sports, it's really important to try to learn good fundamentals, good technique. And I think a lot of times people are trying to play pool like chess where it's all about where the balls should go and where to move, but it's really about the perfect swing. So if you ta take, um, let's say, baseball, slow backswing follow through, basketball, football, slow backswing follow through. So pool is an underhanded throw. So basically, as you get down, you're going to take a slow back swing and follow through. And, and you're just basically throwing something underhanded, like you would be in yeah. softball, right? Except instead of like this, you have your hand like this. Now it's resting right there. Good. Thumb on the knuckle. There you go, like this. OK? And follow through. There you go. Good. Whether you're winning or losing, it's about can you enjoy yourself? Can you have fun? This is about games. And you're just going to take a slow backswing and nice job. Who did that? Cheyenne. Nice. Oh, yeah. You are awesome. Emily, I want to show everyone that anyone can do this game as long as they have a great attitude and I already know you have a great <laughs> attitude. So what I'd like to see is if you could make these four balls in one shot. Okay. So we're going to make a nice slow backswing and nice firm follow through quickly and... Oh my god! 
gosh. <laughs> That's more than anyone else has made in this pool room today. I can promise you that. That was aw yeah, I know. Yes. Do, 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 do. <laughs> That's all the time we have today. Honestly, we just want to say thank you so much for sharing your story mm -hmm. and of course the tips and tricks that we get to take home with us. Yes, I was so impressed by you and well, how quickly you. you picked it up. <laughs> the girls, we all had so much fun and it was a great experience. So thanks for inviting me onto your show. Absolutely, well, we have been officially bitten by the Black Widow and I think it's time that you guys at home are too. So we'll see you later. Okay. It's all yours. Eight ball, quarter pocket. And now we're joined by Dr. Brett Rothstein of Indiana University, our friend Claire, and Jillian, who is the curator for puzzles at the Lilly Library. Thanks for coming in, guys. Thanks for having me. So, Brett, you brought some puzzles with us. Can you uh, tell us a little about what you do with puzzles and your passion you've got here? Well, uh, one of the main things that I do with puzzles is uh, talk a lot about how they're essentially invitations to come play. Mm -hmm. Objects that may sit on a table or uh, on a shelf somewhere and they wait for someone to come along and pick them up and try to figure out what's going on. And you teach a class about these, right? Yes, about these among other things. So yeah. what, what in your class do you, do you teach? One of the main things that we talk about is um, the importance of problem solving, looking at things and trying to figure okay, out what's so he, going on. Okay, so we've got on. your class right here. This yeah. A, uh, what are you guys doing in this right now? In that one, we're building, we built puzzles out of cube-based shapes. Okay. And so they're plugging in the different pieces and then they make uh, components that slide together. Oh, cool! So they are creating their own puzzles right exactly. now for class. Uh, what are some? So are these uh, the kinds of projects you guys normally do, or what's uh, you know what's the kind of? That's one set of the problems we do. Another is that we go over to the Lilly Library and we play with some of the historical puzzles they have in the collection there. Oh, cool! And the students talk a lot about how um, how objects essentially are places where we can uh, play games by ourselves or with other people, meet and kind of connect. Cool, now, okay. Claire, these obviously are probably not as easy as they appear. Do you have one that maybe is one of your favorites? Um, my dad brought this one. It's called Catch of the Day. He made this from a book. Cool. Yeah. Um, he copied it off it and there's a fish inside. You have to get it out. And so the first time he gave it to me, um, I said, oh, Dad, I know how to solve this. Just give me a pair of scissors. <laughs> That's funny. So how do you solve something like that? Um, you just try to use a strategy from other puzzles that you've okay, solved. Okay, cool. Let's try some. Can we try some puzzles? Sure, mm -hmm. sure. Uh, one good place to start, I think, is with this one. Okay. Which is a really cool metal loop. Uh -huh. Well, it's supposed to be a loop that when you put it together, these two magnets will click into place. Okay. The problem is, that if you put it together the way it looks like it should go, the magnets don't click yeah. into place. Yeah. So that's a that's a good one I'll try this. to fool with. Okay. Um, yeah. Which one would you pick? Um. For people. Probably the more recent one. Boom. You got it. Check it out, kids. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> Look at that. All right. You see that? You see that? That's Here. A, it's a great. Here's feeling. one for you, Em. How about you do this? Okay. All right. I'm up for the challenge. I did that less than 10 seconds. So, so really is this good. like more, I, I guess it is a challenge, but is this strategically thinking, logically thinking, um, a lot of problem, problem solving, solving obviously? Yeah. And some of them some of them have mathematical components, but a lot of the ones that are here are really uh, mostly kind of visual problems, trying to mm. sort out where something needs to go, or or in some cases even explain how something got made, like like this one. Yeah, what is that? Taylor. A, it's a, do you see this? I got it. <laughs> Very cool. It's a ring, it's a, it's a copy of something that was originally made in Germany in the late 16th century, the 1500s. Oh, wow. And it's made out of different pieces that are, they're all this shape, and they're all single individual pieces, uncut, wow. unglued. And you have to assemble that whole and thing. And each, each is run through, yeah, and run through its neighbors. They're all put together like this. But now they make a ring. Like this? And the thing you do with that one is you don't even take it apart. The question is, how did it get made? Right. Because nobody cut it, nobody glued it together, but 
there it is. And it wasn't carved from a single block of wood. Either. Right. It was built. I built it. So you said this dated back to the 16th century? The original, the original dates from before 1596. So Jillian, at the Lilly Library, you guys have very dated puzzles that kind of tie into this. Can you tell us about the collection that's there right now? Uh, yeah, it's actually the largest puzzle collection in the world. Cool. There are over 35,000 puzzles wow. and counting. Wow. Um, and they were donated to the library by a man named Jerry Slocum. So if you come to the library to look at the puzzles, you'll actually be in the Slocum room where there's a permanent display of puzzles, about 100 puzzles on display. Uh -huh. And um, there are usually several puzzles out for people to play with and solve as oh, well. Oh, really? Well, that's fun. What's up? Okay, I've been looking at this one the whole time. The Coke <laughs> bottle. Oh. Uh, how do we do this Coke bottle? Because this it's kind of blowing my mind right now. Well, Jill, let, let's let Jillian explain okay. it and then. Okay. So um, this is actually this is a little different than some of the other puzzles that uh -huh. we've talked about. To solve this one, you don't really have to do anything to it. In other words, you don't have to take the arrow out. This is similar to um, this wooden wreath. It's how did the, the arrow get in? Exactly, yeah. So this is just a regular factory Coke bottle. Uh -huh. It's only been cut in these two places, right here and right here. Uh -huh. And this is one solid piece of wood that right. was cut into this arrow shape. It was never cut and glued back together or anything like that. Um, so the puzzle is, how did the arrow get through the Coke bottle? Hmm. Claire, do you have any thoughts? Um, I thought maybe that they might have had two separate pieces for here and here, but when I look at it... But it's one it, piece, right? Yeah. It's one piece. Yeah. Is there anything, uh, I'm trying to think, is there any way this that you is would... Hard. Is, is there something you could do to the wood to get it in there? I don't know. What would that be? I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm racking my brain. I'm trying to use my problem-solving skills. Well, one of the other things that we run into with these is... Uh, we can't actually tell. <laughs> well, if, we're we're not visit, right. tell the if we visit the library, are we allowed to know the answers? Or is it... I've been sworn to secrecy, but if you guess correctly, I will let you know. Oh, okay. Yes. That's a good hmm. challenge. Well, okay, can well, we maybe try another one? Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, can the you. Tangerine. Uh, yeah, Brett, could you do that? Yeah. that you did that one earlier, and it's, it's this really one's, cool. This one's a great one. Um, one and it's, it's two outer pieces that are like the peel of the uh -huh. tangerine. You can see each one reaches around goes around the sort of the fattest part of the of the tangerine and then, then inside of it you have four slices and they are full slices so if I turn them over you'll see they all they come around uh -huh. together and because they make a, a sphere a ball shape the two pieces of peel won't actually come off of them uh -huh. unless you arrange them in just the right way that you can then um, if you organize them properly let's see if I can get it Oh wow, there you go. Then they'll come apart. And I'm, I'm turning it away so people can't actually see, <laughs> see how they're how organized, you, but yeah. it will it will come apart. You're like and a magician, you, you gotta keep your secrets. That's right. And when you do properly, this one just falls apart. It doesn't, it doesn't well, you don't cool. even have to pull. So look at this inside layer and not even the outside. It's almost, yeah, it's almost like you you have to visualize what the, right. the, the sphere looks like inside right. to get the shape out. Well, that's really cool. These are awesome puzzles. Yeah. So practice makes not necessarily perfect, but you get you get the swing of things the more you practice, yeah? Yeah. After a while, you just kind of get in the groove of things. Awesome. Well, I'm kind of excited to try a couple more of these puzzles, but Brett, Jillian, Claire, thank you guys so much for stopping in. If you guys want to try your hand at solving some of these puzzles and to see one of the largest collections in person, plan your trip to the Indiana University Lilly Library by going online to indiana.edu and search puzzles. And while these puzzles continue to frustrate us, we'll send you off to, to the rink to learn about a game for only the toughest players in this Friday's Own Flashback. All sports require skills, strategy, and good senses, but only one requires that the player be fearless. It is a sport fired by fierce competition a rock and roll attitude, and let's not forget, a freewheeling spirit. We visited the Indianapolis Junior Roller Derby team to watch this group of hardcore girls practice, and we even got a chance to talk with a couple of the players. Lainey Thompson, AKA Attitude. I've been doing derby for one year. This is my going on second year. You know that first, like that sport that fits you right? Well, that's what Derby did to me. 
We also spoke with Kaya Munson, AKA Rabid White. It just seemed like the sport for me. I've never actually been on skates until last year when I joined the team. The game starts with two teams of five, roller skating around an oval track. Points are scored as the jammer of each team laps a member of the opposite team, who are called the blockers. Jams are two minutes, and they are, um, and that's the point when you can score. Each game is comprised of two quarters, and you can play as many jams as you need to. When you play, you gotta make sure you watch for the jammer. Make sure she doesn't get through, and let your jammer come through. As we watched. We thought roller derby looked pretty intense, but we were assured that safety always comes first. We stay safe by wearing a helmet, wrist guards, elbow guards, knee pads, and skates. Now safety when we play the game is goes, um, you, there's rules like you cannot push someone on the back, you can't grab them and pull them, you can't grab each other's hair and throw them off the track like you've seen the big girls. Even with all the protective gear, a fall now and then might be inevitable. So the girls showed us the proper way to fall. I've had to help many like new girls learn how to fall. And you don't want to just go, just drop, because that will bust your kneecap. These girls impressed us with their roller skills, but we wondered what their friends and family thought about this unusual passion. They think it's really cool. They think it's like, wow. And all my teachers, they're like, what? For some, roller derby will continue into the competitive adult roller derby leagues as they get older. But for many of them, it's just about having fun. Well, it's not, it's just, it's fun and it's, I want to keep doing derby until I get on the adult team because I just love derby. I hope to just play it. The sport's fun. It's fun to be a diva and a princess on skates, wearing cool tights and cool outfits. So if you think you have what it takes to keep up with these roller girls, visit their website at www.indianapolisjuniorderby.com to find out how to get involved and maybe we'll be seeing your skills on the track. Well, we're back and we've got a crowd with us here in the zone today. Taylor? Yeah, you guys ready to have some fun? Yeah! <laughs> Good. Well, that's awesome. Today's show is all about games, so we've got the perfect craft for you guys. We're going to make our own board games, just like this one right here, which is called Escape from Lava Island. Now, Ooh. let me explain this board game that we made right here. So what you do is, I'm gonna hold it up, put the pieces over here. You're on this island, right? And you start here on your house, and your house is on the top of the island, and you're trying to escape through all the lava that's erupted, and you try, gotta try and get to the ocean to cool off. But the thing is, every time you roll the dice and you land on a space, if you land on a lava space and you spin the spinner every time, if it lands on an erupt, you get burned and you have to go all the way back to the house. So you're trying to escape before the lava gets you. That's the game that we made. So I'm sure you guys will come up with something really fun and creative too. So this is what you'll need at home to make your own game. You will need poster board like this right here. Okay. You will need some construction paper. Uh, you will need scissors. Uh, markers or crayons, uh, and if your game, uh, if you want dice in your game, use dice. You can also make a spinner. Now, to make a spinner like we made right here, you'll want to use one of these brad fasteners, and you'll stick it in there. And an easy way to also make that is to take a hole punch and stick it right through there and get that bad boy going. So, let's start making some board games. You guys ready? Yeah. yeah. I see that there's players here. Yeah. So what we made for our game here, is we made some people? little scientist characters. Lovely. Mm -hmm. Do you guys have ideas generated for your games yet? Tell me. I'm going to do something where you have no. to make equations. Oh, um, friend. To, you want some markers? To um, get past something, and there's going to be like Einstein for one of the players. Ooh, so it's very educational sounding, but yeah, I mean, it's elite. You got to know the math, right? Yep. Anybody else have a really cool idea they want to share with me about your game? Do you know what you're going to do? You do? Let me come over there, Troy. And then Dee Dee's next. All right, tell me what you got. Star Wars and the Friday Zone. <laughs> they merge together. What happened? Well, two ideas. I'm not sure which one to do. Uh, so okay. All right. So we'll get to come back and we'll check in on it. Sound good? I'm game. Dee Dee, you uh, started cut well, you something out. Paper zombie apocalypse. All right. So how will someone win? Uh, you have to try to pass the zombies, and when you do hit a zombie, you either have the chance to be eaten by him and then go back to the starting point. 
or become a zombie. <laughs> All right, that sounds like a zombie-filled situation. We <laughs> started drawing. Try to get to the picnic in time. Trying to, and the, and these are black spots. And if you um get on one, then you um have to start all all the way. All the way back one. at one. Yeah. Tricky. You guys are doing good. Yes, we are. Are you coming up with a different one? Yeah, I'm gonna make another game. Ooh, that looks nice. Well, while we finish up our board games, why don't we take a break for a moment of science? This time on A Moment of Science, we get a little punchy. A Moment of Science. You know that inflatable kid toy that has some character on it and stands about three feet high meant for punching? Hit them as hard as you can, and they'll always spring upright again. How do they manage to always come back up? The secret is the center of gravity. Gravity pulls on an object from every point, but if you put all those effects together, you can come up with one spot that's the average. This is convenient because it turns out any object will behave as if gravity is only pulling on that one spot. That's the center of gravity. In people, the center of gravity is around your belly button. When you're standing upright, gravity acts as if it were pulling you by a string hanging from your belly button straight down between your feet. If you lean to one side, the string hangs to that side as well. When you move beyond the place where your feet are, you fall over. <laughs> the trick with the punch me guy is keeping its center of gravity low. The upper body doesn't have much material. Its feet, however, have some kind of extra weight usually water or sand. Putting extra weight at the bottom assures that the pull will always remain down there. That means that no matter how far the clown tips, its center of gravity never moves outside the range of its heavy base. It can't fall over. I'm Mandy Strife, and this has been a Moment of Science. Science. Welcome back, guys. Hey, Taylor. We have some really creative games going on in here. Have you Ooh, seen them? No, I have not. I've been too busy making my game. Well, let me tell you about this back row really quick. My friend Dee Dee has an unreal game. Can you tell me what you decided on your zombie land? The zombie island, actually. It's um, you're, it's a game where you're a human trying to survive, trying to survive and not become a zombie. Oh. If you land on a fish <laughs> bite, if you land on a There's fish. There's two ways to deal with it, right? Mm -hmm. There's either the heal or a chance card. The chance card will either heal you or turn you into a zombie. So he went above and beyond, and he made cards too for his Cards, game. and awesome. dice, and people. Tell us about your game. This looks intricate. The Adventures of Tintin thing. Oh. Try to go from here, <clears throat> get keys, unlock wardrobe things to get each ship, to get this one scroll that leads you all the way to this one house that has treasure in it. Oh, cool. To the treasure, I like that a lot. You are an algebra man, right? Yeah. How did it turn out? It turned out re really poor. What? I yeah. think it looked really interesting. But you said the math was throwing you off a little bit, right? Yeah. Okay, this is awesome. She has some sort of jungle, right, Mace? Yeah. Tell me about it. Well, you try to get here, and if you um, get to the end of the square, you win. Right? And so what are what are these around it? They look well, they're animals and trees. Like what's that one? Well, that's a monkey. Um, I still haven't been to the army, army yet, though. You have a lion. Mm -hmm. All right, so you have a spinner. Where does your spinner send you? Well, if it lands on the lion, you go to the lion picture, and if it lands on the bush, oh. if you go to there, and the coconut, you go in So the you coconut. coordinated the pieces. Mm -hmm. She has like little symbols on Ooh. like the path, That's like through. Awesome. That's awesome. Penelope, yours turned out really awesome. Who are your pieces? These look good. Big? A girl and a boy. They're nice. So what's your game called? Mystery time. And what do you do? And you try to get all the way to the X and get the treasure. What is that? It looks sparkly. It's diamonds and rings. That's why, diamonds and rings. All right, all right, just start because this is amazing. All right, tell me about it. You have to get your piece to, you have to get all of the 
um, grocery items and then get to the checkout before It's a everyone. supermarket. <laughs> yeah. Wow. It's awesome. So it's like a stoplight almost, like your color pieces, and you have to get apples, bread, and carrots in your basket the fastest at the end. Isn't that cool? Very nice. I like it. You guys have any great ones over there? Uh, Tanner, uh, you want to talk about your game? I don't really know. <laughs> well, I know that Tanner loves birds. And so we were deciding what, what kind of game she makes. We picked her favorite animal, bird. So basically what she has is she has all these little bird pieces right here. You want to hold some up? I'll hold one up with you. She made all these little birds, which are so cool. And then we've got her board, and the birds are just trying to get back home. That's awesome. Nice, simple game. And Troy, what'd you make? Right. Ship game. Cool. And then what's, uh, what do you do? Basically when you roll the die, go forward. Mm -hmm. So it's a shortcut and a back cut. When you hit land on the back cut, you have to go all the way back oh, here. Oh, you don't want to oh. hit that back cut. It's like a current out in the ocean or something. But look at those pieces. Look at these boats. Yeah, let's take, the, take a look at these. They're talented. That's so cool. Well, I made <laughs> I made the Super Zone game, if you guys can see this. Now, it's, it's Emily versus Taylor. And so I drew uh, <laughs> Super Emily and Super Taylor. You I can see it. those two. Zoom oh on in goodness. on there. And so what they do is they, uh, they travel across the board. You roll the dice. And when they land on a super space, then they battle each other, and it's kind of like rock, paper, scissors. But you spin, each person would spin the spinner, and if it lands on punch, a punch beats a kick, kind of like with, a, with paper beats rock. Uh, but then when you fly, <laughs> that, you can avoid any other uh, moves or whatever. But then once they get to the final one, there's a final showdown, and then that shows who the ultimate superhero <laughs> is. I'm going to have to play this one later. It's my last one I want to stop on, just because you all know basketball is my favorite sport. Tell me about your game. My game is a little basketball game. You have to get to the basketball game before somebody else gets to the basketball. And you called it the what? The golden ball. The golden golden ball. ball. Isn't that me? You guys, well, this has been a lot of fun. I'm so glad you were able to come in and make your games with us. They look great. Play them and show us later. They right? certainly do. And if you guys at home create your own board games, we'd love to see them. And you can connect with us at our website at FridayZone.org. Maybe you'll even see a photo on an upcoming episode of yourself. From there, you can also play games, write on your computer, watch episodes, and even see behind the scene photos of this week's show. But for now, remember to live, learn, and play the Friday Zone way. We'll see you here next week. Time to play, right? Let's play our game. Let's do it. Who's, who's doing more play first? Production support for the Friday Zone is provided by the Margaret A. Cargill Foundation and by WTIU members. Thank you.